Hey what's up guys this is iPhone Dev Tips here and in this video we're gonna look at how can we make a counter app using the NS timer. So let's just directly jump into it and I wanna tell you that this application is gonna be pretty easy and it's pretty logical so you're gonna you're gonna easily understand this application. So let's just open Xcode and create an Xcode project and I wanna create a single view application next and I want to simply name this app iTimer for now and make sure the language is set to Swift and the device is set to iPhone and make sure that the use core data option is disabled and click next and I want to create the project in any location that you want okay so we are here into application so this application that we're going to build is for iPhone 5 I mean iPhone 5 screen size to iPhone 5 or 5s I'm just going to select 5s and okay now since we are in the project the first thing to do is go to main.storyboard and click on this go to the uh, the first identity and type thing I don't know what this is called yeah it's called a file inspector sorry and make sure you disable this use size classes so you're gonna disable size classes but before doing that make sure this keep size class data for is set to iPhone and click on that disable size for iPhone classes so this gives you an iPhone 4 size Okay, now let's just uh, add the elements in here. So the first thing that we're going to add is a navigation bar. So just find that here it is. So um, I'm going to open that. Uh, double tap uh, on the title to change the title. So I'm just going to make that as eye timer. Cool. Then the second thing that we're going to add is a toolbar. So just search for that. Is it? Here it is. Okay. Then, then we have a small button at the uh, left top. Uh, sorry, the left bottom corner of the toolbar. So I'm just going to double tap on the toolbar and not single tap because if you notice, if you single tap, it selects the toolbar and not the button. Um, so I'm just going to double tap the toolbar and go into the attribute inspector and make sure and I'm going to change the identifier in here. So I'm just going to change the identifier to play to get the play button here. So double tap attribute inspector and then identifier to play. And then this change the item changes to uh, play button or play icon. Then I want to add a flexible space bar button item just to spay, uh, you know place the uh, items uh, pretty uh, flexibly rather so I'm just gonna add a bar button item next at the this area and I'm again gonna double tap and make sure you do not single tap and after double tapping go into attribute inspector and this time set the uh, identifier to pause okay now once you do that it's gonna get you the pause button okay now we are done with the toolbar and there are only two things to add one is the label for our counter app or uh, I mean the stopwatch so create a nice big uh, label uh, uh, I want to set the text to be zero and I want to as uh, align the text in the center by clicking on this uh, option in the middle of the alignment then I want to change the text size to 100 okay then last thing we're going to create a drag in the button just below the this, uh, label I mean the zero label and uh, this is for uh, resetting our timer. Okay, we successfully placed all the elements. Now let's just link these up. I um, mean, creating our uh, create IB outlets and IB actions. So let's just create the IB outlet of this zero, I mean, the time label. So I'm just going to click this time, uh, create outlet naming time label. And then I want to create the three IB actions for the reset, play, and the pause button. So starting the reset button, um, make sure uh, type in reset button and make sure the connection is action, okay, not output. And click connect, and then just again double tap on. Now let's go on the play button. So double tap on this. Make sure you do not single tap because, uh, as I said, it selects the toolbar. So double tap on the play button. Create the. Uh, uh, mean fact that blue color line below the reset button or above the reset button it depends on your choice so I'm just gonna name this play button and uh, you see I've mistakenly created an IB outlet see that's what I was telling you about 
So if we just do that, double tap on this and click on the, I mean right click this and then you get an option in here seeing the, all the alphabets that you created. So IB actions, fencing outlets and you see this is the outlet that we created. So delete that outlet because we don't that want that outlet. So again double tap, um, go back it below or above rather, and call it as play button. And this time make sure it's action. Uh, sorry guys if I mistakenly did that. Then add the play button, so the same thing. Type the pause button, sorry, not the play button, it's the pause button, and click action. Do that. Done. So we are finished with um, doing all the applets. So simply go to view controller.swift and just start coding. But before that, I wanted to declare the things in here. So starting with creating a variable, call us counter, and that's gonna that's an integer, so I'm gonna set the value or that's equal to zero. And I'll, I'll just tell you the purpose of doing this in just a second. And then we're going to create a timer, uh, which should be a NS timer, not and not NS timer uh, time interval. And just initialize this right here. Okay. So, wh why I have set uh, you know set up this uh, variable counter, which is an integer, is we can use this. Uh, to count up the time once we click the play button and this would help us to count up the time every one second because we're going to schedule the timer in, the, in that way so what we're going to do is um, uh, in this we did uh, load function about the super we dot we did load type in uh, time label which is the label which is going to count up uh, dot text is equal to string type in string with these uh, in these uh, parentheses, or sorry, brackets, I don't know what these are called, I just forgot for a second, and type in counter inside that. So, what this line basically is that we are setting the time label, that is the timer, I mean the time that, that is 0, 1, 2, 3, anything, is going to be the, uh, uh, the time, or rather the value that's set in the counter. But since uh, you know that the time label dot text needs a n string and the counter is an integer, we're gonna convert that counter to a string. So to do that, you just type in string and add those two parentheses. And inside those two parentheses, you're gonna type in the uh, basically the uh, integer value that you're gonna convert to a string. Okay, so once it's done, let's just start programming for the play button. So what's going to happen once the play button is pressed? So once the play button is pressed, uh, you want the timer to start. So I'm going to say the timer is equal to ns timer dot schedule timer with interval and make sure the second option with all uh, the biggest one with uh, selector and other stuff. So that um, I mean. Uh, amount of second this uh, timer is going to run is one second because we're going to load up the value every one second and then the target is going to be self and then the selector is going to be uh, capital S so that, and then type in selector at these parentheses and inside that uh, within the these two uh, so, uh, double quotes uh, I'm going to type in update timer you can type in any one uh, anything here depending on the method you want to create the user info will be nil and make sure that the repeats is set to true because you want to make sure that this time uh, this uh, and this timer runs every one second and then and this not stops after lining up one yeah you know the first one second that it's scheduled for so this is gonna run every one second and it's gonna call a method called as update timer so I want to create that right now, so I'm going to say function, which is func update timer. Uh, these parentheses, open brackets, and close brackets. So as we said, the the method name to update timer, we want that exactly to be this and with these parentheses. Uh, so what's going to happen? Well, every one second in this method. So first things first. This is very simple. So we want to say simple. Simply say time label uh, what we have said that time label dot text is equal to string again because that's an integer value equals to counter oh, sorry not condense counter plus plus okay so 
as we as we know that this um, NS timer is going to run every second and it's going to call this update timer function every one second. Uh, what we want to do every one second in this update timer function is we're going to set the top, you know the text to be the counter and that's counter that counter is going to uh, you know add a plus one value every one second because we're going to set the timer to every one second. So what's going to happen is this time label dot text is going to add up um, add uh, it's once uh, add one to its uh, you know the current time every one second. So it's going to load up like one two three four just like adding one second uh, sorry adding one number with uh, within one second. So this is pretty simple concept and since you know that uh, the counter is integer value, you're gonna convert the string using this string uh, called concatenation. So then let's just code for the play button. Sorry, the pause button. So what's gonna happen for the pause once the uh, you know the timer is paused? So the, once the timer is paused, it's this simple. It's just gonna invalidate that timer. I mean to stop the timer. So it's gonna stop running or stop counting up. So say timer dot invalidate that's it for the pause button now let's go for the reset button so once again if the reset is clicked we again want to invalidate that and as we re as we reset it the counter is really going to be mean the text is going to be zero so i'm going to say before doing that i'm going to say counter is zero and then we can just directly say timer label sorry dot time label dot text is equal to string because that counter value is a integer and let's type in counter. So what we are doing in this stopping the timer so that the time you don't count up and the count we're gonna set the counter value to zero because we are resetting that, just setting the uh time label mean the label of the time that we just create an IB outlet off to uh, the zero mean the current zero value. So uh let's just run this project up right now. So I believe this is a pretty easy to understand application and this is one of the most basics of Swift language. Okay, so here we have our simulator and our application is going to load right now. Let's just wait for a minute. I think the application kind of crashed. So let's just reopen Xcode. And yeah, here's it, our app. So let's just click on the run button. So it's very simple, application simple, and I uh, believe you have understood all the codes. So let's see if our simulator is running. So here's the app, iTimer, and it's going to run. And here we have it. So let's just click the play button. Yeah, and we have our timer running. So you just touch the pause button. So once you click on the pause button, the timer stops. And if you click on the reset button, it goes back to the zero, and it's gonna start. We can start again by clicking on that. Cool. So I believe I have understood anything since I just repeated this again and again uh, twice. I believe because that's just for you people to understand. This application because this is a very uh, simple application and it's the most I mean one of the you know uh, the basic information about Swift. So thank you guys. I can meet you in my next video tutorials. And I want to tell you guys I'm, I'm also going to do a series on how to make a to-do list app. So it's going to be pretty amazing. And again, uh, we're gonna do logical coding in there. So. It's not too way too depth into the Swift language, but it's the logical coding. So thank you guys. Uh, I'll meet you in my other videos. Hola, yeah.